so 0 0.000078 um, I, that would translate into 0 over 10 plus 0 over 100 plus and I'm just going to stick to exponents here 0 over 10 squared plus 0 over 10 cubed plus 0 over 10 to the fourth plus 7 over 10 to the fifth plus 8 over 10 to the sixth okay so I want to multiply this um, by something that would allow that 7 to be a whole number okay so I want to get that 7 to be 7 point something so I'm going to, a little clever, I'm going to multiply by 10 to the 5th and 10 to the negative 5th. Right? So on the outside, I really haven't changed anything. 10 to the 5th times 10 to the negative 5th uh, just is 1. It's really 10 to the 0 power, right? But what that allows me to do then is I can distribute that 10 to the 5th into each of my fractions, and that will change their place value and that 10 to the negative 5 is going to stay outside as the scientific form. All right, so here I get um, 10 to the first right there. So I get 0 times 10 to the fourth plus 0 times 10 to the third plus 0 times 10 squared plus 0 times 10 plus 7, which is what we wanted, plus 8 over 10 times 10 to the negative 5. Now all of those zeros aren't going to make a difference in the number and so I have 7.8 times 10 to the negative 5. That's, don't want to confuse you with some strange symbol. Um, okay, so once I've done the expanded form then I would ask the class, what do you notice? Well, if the number was a decimal smaller than 1 then I would count place value and that would be the exponent of 10 and if it was larger than 1 uh, I would count place value and that would be the uh, exponent of the original 10 so let's do a couple examples make sure we're okay with this uh, so 413 million 682,000 uh, and I want to convert that into scientific notation okay so hopefully students caught on that we take the zero and we count place value. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right there. So 4.13682 times 10 to the eighth power in scientific form. Uh, let's throw a negative in here. So point zero 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 two three one. Okay, so again, I'm going to count place value. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 2.31 times 10 to the negative 5. Um, there you go. Now let me start by giving us a decimal to physically divide. Uh, and then just like everything else we've seen, um, let's take a familiar concept, use that to develop the rule with it, and then remind ourselves what the actual rule is. But again, we're, we're taking something common and developing something new from something we already understand. Uh, well, 75.45 divided by 3, we can rewrite as a fraction. And... I'm going to look at that those two decimal digits. Um, is there something I can multiply uh, the 0.45 by to make it into a whole number? And the answer is yes. If I, in fact, multiplied that by 10 squared, um, I could generate, uh, I'd get rid of, it wouldn't have a decimal anymore. All right? So 7,545 over 300. Uh, and so at that point, um, we want to go back to our fraction skills. So now we're staring at a fraction that we know how to manipulate. So how many times does the 300 fit into 7,545? 
Um, and hopefully we end up that it goes in there 25 times with 45 left over. Over, I'm sorry, 45 over 300. And from here we can, well, 45 goes into 300, 15, or reduces down to 15 over 100. And so that would be 25.15, right? But notice how we, we went about this. We used some frac, we used ex, um, expanded form to divide, convert it into some fraction rules, and then we used already established fraction rules to simplify the problem down. Now, um, let's modify this um, to have a decimal in, involved in the divisor. So let's say we were doing 0.32 into 1.2032. And the question is, what do we do about that decimal? Well, what did we do up top? In the initial problem that we had, we multiplied by uh, the numerator and denominator by the same uh, factor of 10 squared. Well, in decimal form, though, what did that physically do? That moved the decimal over a certain number of places. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, we're, we want to move this over two places, so we're going to move in that number two places. And so our problem changes to 32 into 120.32. Uh, and now we can divide and use our rules for it. Okay, so how many times does 32 go into 120? Uh, it goes in there three times. Let me get some space so I can actually work this out. So 3 times 32 would be uh, 96. And then I could subtract that and get uh, 24. And then I would drop the 3 down. And then how many times does 30 go into 32 go into 243? Uh, la, 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 la. Let's see, it's about seven times. Now, just put the, since we now are dealing with the decimal, we want to put the decimal in. Uh, and multiply that out. 32 times 7 is 224. Uh, subtract there, and we should get, uh, let's see, we'll borrow. So we should get 19. Drop the 2 down. And how many times does 32 go into 192? And that should be about 6. And when I multiply that out, I get 192 exactly, so I don't have a remainder. So, uh, let's see, our answer is 3.76. Okay. And then we'd ask students, well, what do you notice? Um, well, this looks just like dividing normal numbers. We just have that rule about moving the decimal digit over uh, depending upon how many places the number on the outside needs. Okay, so now we're going to go through a list of mental computation techniques. Um, and again, the I, I still find it amusing that I'm doing this online. Um, the idea is to do this in your head. So I have to write it out so you can see what I'm describing as you're, you're supposed to try to be thinking about this in your head. Um, so it's, it's a mental technique rather than a physically writing out technique. Um, so uh, let me give us some numbers to add. Uh, 1.5 plus 3.7 plus 4.48. Okay, so breaking and bridging, the idea here is to look at our numbers and think about what are some nice, easy things that I can break up and combine in other places. So I, for example, see that 1.5 plus the 3, I'm going to break up that 3.7 into 3, and that happens to be 4.5. So if I take this number and that piece and put them together, I have 4.5 plus 0.7 plus 4.48. Okay, well, what about the 4.5 plus the 0.7? Uh, that part we can hopefully do in our heads, and that's 5.2. So 
So now I got 5.2 plus, so this piece and this piece, uh, we combine together to the 4.48. And then I think, well, let's take that 5.2 plus the 4. That's 9.2. So this piece and the whole number piece plus the 0.48. And then I think, well, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.48 has to be 0 0.68. So that plus those two pieces together give us 9.68 when all said and done. So I, with breaking and bridging, the idea is to break a number up and add them uh, in smaller pieces rather than all at once. Again, mental technique. Uh, next idea is something called using compatible numbers. Uh, this is similar to what we've seen with other types of uh, additions and things. So let me give us a series of numbers that we are going to add. Okay, so I want to add those four numbers together. Now I notice 7.91 and 4.09 um, are uh, the 1 and the 9 are very compatible with each other. Um, so if I add up you know that I get a 0 there, I get 10, carry the 1, I get another 0, carry actually uh, yeah, yeah, carry that and I get um, let's see 12 when all said and done. Okay so these two numbers give me 12. And then 3.85, I notice the 0.85 and the 1.5, again, it's like filling a hole. Um, that I can see that gives me a 4, right? So this devolves into 12 plus 4, which is then 16. So I looked for different numbers that were easier to combine together than the order I was given in, and I added those up to kind of see uh, what, the, what the result would be.